Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Triveni Turbine Limited Q2 and H1 FY22 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Rishab Barar of CDR India. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. Good day, everyone, and a warm welcome to all of you participating in the Q2 and H1 FY22 earnings conference call of Triveni Turbine Limited. We have with us today on the call Mr. Nikhil Soni, Vice Chairman and Managing Director, Mr. S. N. Prasad, President, Global Sales Product, Mr. Lalit Ag Agarwal, Chief Financial Officer, and Ms. Surbhi Chandana, Investor Relations and Value Creation. Before we begin, I would like to mention that some statements made in today's discussion may be forward-looking in nature, and a statement to this effect has been included in the invite which was emailed to everybody earlier. I would also like to emphasize that while this call is open to all invitees, it may not be broadcasted or reproduced in any form or manner. We will start this call with opening remarks from the management, following which we will have an interactive question and answer session. I now request Mr. Nikhil Soni to share some perspectives with you with regard to the operations and outlook for the business. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much, Rishabh. Uh, a very good afternoon to all of you, and welcome to the Q2 half-year results earning call for Triveni Turbine Limited. Before I get into the, the performance of the business, I'd like to talk about a significant uh, milestone, a significant uh, event that the uh, company underwent during the quarter, which is a settlement of its disputes with General Electric and Baker Hughes. The, there were multiple disputes over the last two years between the JV partners and the parties have agreed to terminate the joint venture and fully and finally settle and resolve the disputes. As part of the settlement agreement, TTL has acquired the entire shareholding by DI Netherlands in the equity share capital of GTL for a consideration of 8 crores and thus GTL has become a wholly owned subsidiary of TTL and is no longer a joint venture with any BH parties or GE parties. The name of the company has been changed from GE Triveni Limited to Triveni Energy Solutions Limited with effect from 21st October 2021. And TTL has received a settlement consideration of 208 crores, of, of which 190 crores was delivered during the second quarter, and 18 crores has also been received, but that is in Q3. The parties will now be free to compete with each other, and accordingly, TTL will now approach the market segments independently in all respects. We are pleased with this resolution, which was done amicably with respect to TESL, and apart from the settlement consideration, there have been other impacts on the balance sheet uh, of Triveni Turbine Limited due to a higher asset base than the price that was paid for consideration of the shares, which has led to an increase in reserves by about 27 crores, and you can see an impact of that in other comprehensive income of 19 crores in the reported P&L as well. On the operating side, we remain excited about the prospects of, of approaching the 30 to 100 megawatt segment independently. And it, it, it enhances the addressable market of Triveni turbines, which as you know, was all, we already dominated the lower than 30 megawatt category. So we are excited by the fact that we will be able to approach this market segment independently with our, in, with our entrepreneurial vigor and with focus of our personnel. Our technology levels and development have always contributed towards the technology of our joint venture GETL, which will now be able to operate independently in this space. Now, as the business of the entire company. We are witnessing a very strong momentum in the domestic market after a sluggish financial year 21. However, the international markets where the company operates are recovering slower than we anticipated. This is evident in our order booking, where, as communicated earlier, we were able to achieve an order booking of 4.25 billion rupees in the half year FY22, an increase of 86% year over year, which is almost equal to the financial year 21 order booking. I must point out that we have been 
optimistic on our order booking for the last two quarters and had given this visibility to our investors at that point in time. We remain equally optimistic on the coming quarters, but I will come to that subsequently. We expect that progressively, progressively relaxation of travel restrictions in the international markets, especially in our key export domains of Southeast Asia, will enhance the contribution of international markets to our order bookings in the subsequent two quarters. As a company, we, also, we are also seeing an increase in the travel of our sales team in both the product and aftermarket division, which we expect to yield very good results in the coming quarters. As you could already see, our CEO and ED, Mr. Arun Mote, as well as uh, our president, aftermarket Sachin, are not on this call. And we've always ensured that they were on this call. This is due to the fact that they are traveling internationally. Prasad, who is also our president international, is currently taking this call from Milan in Italy. <clears throat> During the quarter, revenue for the company grew, 40, grew, grew by 11.4% year over year to 2.07 billion rupees, driven by, the domestic, driven by domestic sales, which grew by 58% year over year to 1.4 billion rupees, while the export turnover declined by 31%. Q2 FY22 revenues were impacted by delays in some orders which were in transit and could not be recognized during the quarter. EBITDA was lower by 12.1% year over year at, at 477 million rupees and EBITDA margins which declined by 6.2% year over year to 23.1%. The decline in EBITDA margin is largely attributable, attributable to a higher domestic contribution in revenue as well as a higher material cost due to inclusion of erstwhile GTL now TESL, where the material cost as a percentage of sales were higher due to a fair valuation of interest in inventory. There has also been a, a somewhat of an impact of higher commodity prices in the higher raw material prices that we have faced in this current quarter. Profit after tax grew by 612% year over year to 1.74 billion rupees, which was significantly impacted by the exceptional gain which is reported in the results that in front of you. The investments, including cash, at the end of the quarter stand at 7.32 billion rupees, and as at the end of Q2 FY22, they are up 2.96 billion rupees quarter on quarter, driven by this final settlement that we that I've already alluded to. The mix of the of domestic and export sales stands at 68 to 32 in the Q2 FY22 as compared to 48 to 52 in Q2 FY21. The total of consolidated outstanding order book stands at 8.28 billion rupees as on the 30th of September 2021, which is higher by 14% when compared to the previous quarters and 24% higher than the previous year. This momentum, as I've already alluded to, will continue in Q3 and Q4 of this year, and we are optimistic of a very good starting order book in four-digit crores for the new financial year FY23. The company has achieved a record order booking of 3.07 billion rupees in Q2 FY22, which is the highest in the last several years, as against 1.7 billion rupees during Q2 FY21, an increase of 74% for both domestic and international orders contributed to this growth. The domestic order booking, as you could see, contributed more significantly, and this was higher than our expectations. During the quarter, 2.25 billion rupees was the contribution towards the domestic order booking, which is higher by 81% as compared to the last year. And the domestic order booking now stands at 5.85 billion rupees, up 27% on September 30th, as compared to 4.59 billion rupees in the corresponding period of the previous year. The export order booking during the quarter was 817 million, which is high by 56% as compared to last year, but it is short of our expectations for the quarter. Most of the orders were booked through virtual interactions. However, export sales continue to be impacted by COVID during this quarter, but we are optimistic in the coming quarters that we would have a greater participation of the international market in our order booking. On the product side, order booking improved significantly to 2.32 billion rupees, which is higher by 120% when compared to the corresponding period of the previous year. The product segment turnover was 1.51 billion rupees during the quarter, an increase of, six, 
from 9% over the previous year. The aftermarket segment has also registered an order booking of 753 million rupees, which was high by 6% when compared with the corresponding period of the previous year. Domestic interactions have increased as travel within the country is earning to normal, and international activity has also gained pace. The aftermarket turnover was 558 million rupees, a growth of 19% over the previous year for the current quarter. The aftermarket segment contributed 27% of the total revenue in FY22, and in Q2 FY22, up from 25% in the previous year. We expect good order booking in the aftermarket segment as well in both Q3 and Q4, as well as then good growth for the entire financial year. In Q2 FY22, the domestic market under 30 megawatts is estimated to have increased by 98% year over year, while the international market has largely remained flat for us in megawatt terms. The, com the company continues to focus on design and development and technology. We believe that this has been the mainstay of the company by which it has been able to achieve its market dominance as well as low cost position. We will continue to, to spend money on organic research and development, both in, within the company as well as with our partners and educational institutions to enhance the value proposition that we bring to our clients for a better, efficient, and more cost reliable solution. These will also include further developments in the API segment, which we will continue to invest into from a technological perspective, but also and further invest in uh, uh, decarbonized solutions such as supercritical carbon dioxide. This investment will continue for the foreseeable future, and we believe that we would, we would look at certain opportunities to acquire technologies as well, which may be able to provide us the visibility as a company to enhance revenues in the years to come. So far in H1 financial year 22, we've witnessed a heightened investment activity in many end user industries such as sugar, distilleries, food processing, chemicals, pharmaceuticals, paper, steel, cement, etc. And with the threat of COVID-19 subsiding across the country and with vaccinations reaching the milestone 1 billion mark, we believe that we will witness improved growth trends in the quarters to come. Our international market is significantly skewed towards the renewable side of the business, which is not so much in India, but we believe in the coming years we would find an increased participation of areas such as municipal solid waste incineration, waste to energy plants, uh, which would capture a greater share of our inquiry and order books. Inquiries in the domestic market have increased by 40% in Q2 and 67% in the international market. We believe that this foretells a, a very optimistic sign for us as both markets continue to grow. Input prices have increased significantly over the past year. We've seen MS plate prices, copper, forging ingots, which are significantly based on chrome, increase by over 50% and some even more than 70% over the past year. There has been some pressure on margins, but the company itself is not worried because we believe that within a prudent mixture of Cost, cost rationalization as well as passing some of these costs on to customers, we will be able to weather this. There will, of course, I, I presume, be questions about the decline in the bid time level in this current quarter. And as we have talked about in the past, no one quarter should be seen for Triveni turbines because they, that is a reflection of the mix of orders that were dispatched within that quarter, as well as between different geographies of international versus domestic. We are optimistic and continue to maintain that Triveni turbines will operate within an EBITDA margin of 23-24% or, or, or maybe 25%, and we would maintain an, a PPT in excess of 20 to 22%. Lastly, as the company continues to maintain a high cash balance, and which was increased by 2.96 billion rupees in this current quarter, which is contributed significantly by an exceptional item of about 190 billion, 1.9 billion rupees. We also had good increases in cash due to operational efficiencies as well as increased customer advances. As we go forward, the company has, the board has decided to issue a dividend for this current quarter, a 40% interim dividend and a 60% special dividend to shareholders. Given the cash in hand, the company will, will be looking very aggressively at areas and ways for it to diversify, but in a prudent way. 
we believe and we are currently contemplating measures by which we can enhance our, our proximity to customers, which we had tried to do through opening international offices in the past. We believe that a more prudent method may be to acquire these customer relationships on the ground, which will impact and be part of our, cust our, our aftermarket business, where we would be able to be closer to our customers, get recurring revenue immediately, and be EPS accretive immediately. These are the type of principles that we would like to use in our further growth. Having said that, the board has not considered any inorganic opportunities at, at, at present, but though we believe that there may be opportunities that may arrive in the, in the coming quarters. We, of course, would always maintain a return on equity and return on capital as being our primary factors by which any decisions would get made. And of course, any money that would not get spent in a prudent manner should, in our belief, get returned to shareholders over the medium term. With that, I'd like to open the floor for question and answers. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Ravi Swaminathan from Spark Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for taking my question, sir, and congrats on a good order and flow momentum for the second quarter of this year also. Uh, my first question is with respect to the uh, market size uh, for the uh, 0 to 30 and 30 to 100 megawatt. Uh, you had mentioned about growth in that market. If you can mention the absolute size of that market, both domestic and international. Um, the market size for the domestic market below 30 megawatts as, uh, is, is, is double of what it was last year. It's somewhere in the region for the first half year at 550 odd megawatts. And the international market size uh, is, 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 a very, is a different number because we don't have full visibility. In the domestic market, we have near full visibility of orders that come through. The international oh. market, of course, visibility is, is, uh, is to the extent that we have been able to garner those inquiries. Okay. And uh, the 30 to 100 megawatts, sir, how, domestic market, how big is it? Uh, the, globally, the 30 to 100 megawatt market is about one and a half times the size of the below 30 megawatt market globally. In oh. India, just given the size of our industry and the fact that we have a higher participation of small and medium industries, we actually have a smaller contribution of the above 30 megawatt segment to the entire market, which is possibly about 60% of the below 30 megawatt market. Got it, sir. But... Uh, uh, usually, uh, the largest uh, sectors in market in customer sectors like steel, cement, they consume more in the 30 to 100 megawatt range, right? I think in 2010-11, uh, it was a pretty sizable market. Do we see uh, that coming back? Uh, also, my uh, there is also yes. another question. Yes, yes you know, that's a very good question actually. But uh, you see the different requirements from uh, from these customers, especially the large customers like you talked about in terms of steel and uh, cement. Within cement, the majority of demand has been coming from waste heat recovery, which is uh, sort of greenfield over uh, brownfield expansion, which is in in the smaller megawatt category. There's, there have been very, not as many uh, inquiries and orders that have been placed for greenfield uh, capacity expansion, which is which may be of a higher capacity size. Uh, we believe that those are those will come about, and we are optimistic on that. On the steel front, you have large integrated steel mills, which will, have, which will be in the hundreds of megawatts in terms of power, power requirements. But you have smaller rolling mills and scrap and sponge iron mills, which have requirements within our range, as well as stretching into the 30, 40 megawatt odd category. We, as a company, have the products and, and solutions which can adequately cater to all of these, these markets. We have actually seen good demand from the steel segment, both in the below 30 megawatt, as well as above 30 megawatt, segment, especially from East India, uh, our Eastern markets. Uh, we see actually fixed capital formation across the line. You know, uh, very frankly, you follow the markets yourself and you know that the distillery segment has 
a huge capex movement underway. The pharmaceutical and chemical sector has a good capex requirement underway. Paper has good capex underway. You have steel and cement, which have different varies of capital expenditure underway. And so we see um, a large degree of capital expenditure from our perspective in all our end user markets. Specifically on the, the renewable waste to energy segment and solid municipal waste incineration segment, there has been not that much of a pickup. This has always been consistent in demand in India, but we believe in the coming quarters and years as the government pushes more towards the Swachh Bharat that we will find uh, municipal, municipal uh, solid waste incineration and waste to energy picking up, much like we've seen in the international markets. Uh, we, we will all look with a certain degree of optimism with these COP26 uh, uh, discussions, which will probably provide some degree of visibility in terms of government policy on matters like this. Got it, sir. And uh, uh, my second question is with respect to the uh, joint venture, given the fact that it is largely behind now, uh, uh, are, uh, what kind of renewed efforts uh, are we putting on the 30 to 100 megawatt range in terms of product range, marketing, um, uh, across different geographies, I mean, uh, outside India market, uh, are we looking at gaining market share category now? So if you can uh, touch upon what Triveni is trying to do new in the 30 to 100 megawatt range now. Yeah, you bring up, well, one of, as you, as you pointed out initially, we do have a very good order book. We have a very healthy order book go going forward. And we're very optimistic on growing that order book also. As it's from, from, from its current base of 820, 828 crores. The, the 30 to 100 megawatt segment has always had technology development from our side, which we've done over the last seven, eight years. And we've had products which have an installed base already, uh, and we have running, ready and running references in this segment. So we are hitting this ground, the ground running. You bring up a point which we find that we have to invest in, which is manpower. Manpower from the marketing side, manpower from technical side, manpower from uh, execution and diversification. This is a this is an area where that we will be investing in um, uh, significantly going forward. To to to, but to answer your question on reach of the 1300 to 100 megawatt segment, we will ensure that in the coming year that we will have greater visibility. I have our president sales on the line as well, uh, Prasad. If I could ask you to shed some light as to how exactly we will be uh, get, getting greater degree of inquiries from this segment, which can then translate into orders. Yes, yes. So in uh, coming to 3200 megawatt uh, uh, range, as our uh, vice chairman mentioned that, yes, uh, our reach see now sub 30 megawatt, uh, our inquiry base is coming from over 110 countries uh, today. In the similar way, 3200 megawatt range, uh, now we'll be using the same uh, approach same uh, go-to-market strategy, same channel partners who will be earlier, they were not dealing with the 3200 megawatt range. Today, once uh, this became a 100% subsidiary company of Triveni, so the channel partner arrangement will be the same. So we are quite optimistic the visibility of the market will substantially increase for us. And our competitive advantage and our aftermarket support, these are the two things internationally people value for that. So with these uh, unique uh, selling points, we'll be able to address the market requirements with the competitive product. We are very uh, bullish on that. Got it, sir. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to the participants, please limit your questions to three per participant. For any follow-up, may we request you to rejoin the queue. The next question is from the line of Ankit Babel from Shubkam Ventures. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, good afternoon. Uh, sir, sure. my first question is on the uh, scalability of your uh, API business. Now, uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, we heard uh, last time that the inquiry level was as high as 1,000 machines and your uh, company level current production overall it was around 110 to 120 machines and your capacity is 220 machines. So even if you get a 5-10% uh, share from this inquiry level, you can actually double your revenue. So just wanted to understand how are things going at uh, in that area and what kind of scalability you are seeing say in the couple of years from this segment. Um, but let me answer that question in, in, in slightly different way because you see number of machines may be the capacity constraints that we have in terms of testing, but not all uh, uh, machines that we make need to be tested in the same way that we, that we run for our larger machines. The typical size of machine that we sell into the market 
uh, uh, non-API would be in the range of between 8 to 12 megawatts. That would be the average size. The average size of API turbine is between is about 1 megawatt. That's the average size. Uh, so so they are, these are significantly smaller, significantly lighter, significantly uh, uh, um, uh, uh, machines which, which, which can be done in a different production methodology. We have the capacity in place. There may be some incremental capex that we need to do. Like you pointed out of the market size of about 1,000 on, meg, 1000 on machines that we have uh, uh, visibility on, Triveni has already garnered good, good uh, orders from this segment and we continue to believe that we will get good market share in this segment going forward. Our value proposition of having a cost-effective machine, which is both reliable and robust for these API customers, is something that is quite consistent with what they desire. Um, Prasad, would you like to add uh, on this question on, on API? Yes. So, uh, as we rightly discussing, API is one of the key segments for us. So, as we mentioned in earlier calls also, today Triveni has been approved by all the international consultants and the EPCs and OE. The inquiry pipeline is quite strong. Uh, our vice chairman mentioned that this segment of the business is a, a different way because uh, these are all sub one megawatt or one megawatt average size of the machine. Since our acceptability there uh, globally, yes, uh, coming years, this uh, segment will be one of the key growing segments for us. So, but last time it was also mentioned that, uh, you know, the value per machine in the API segment is higher than the existing machine. So I'm slightly confused that like uh, uh, from value terms, like what, how much would be a 12 megawatt compared to, I mean, a 12 megawatt normal machine which you are manufacturing as of now and a one megawatt API in value terms. Would it be like no, one twelfth the size? No, no, no. So, so, this, so in, in general, um, these all steam turbines are customized and engineered to order. So there is no reference pricing of for one turbine for one price because the because there are too many variables that go in there in terms of customer requirements. Is it extraction? Is it condensing? Is it back pressure? Is what are the temperature and pressure requirements that they may be that may be required by the customer and as well as special requirements from the balance of plant, etc. What you find is in general as a megawatt comes lower, the price per megawatt is higher. This is just this is just basic uh, 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 absorption of overhead as well as uh, other factors of how the market operates. In the API segment, given the strong push on reliability and safety, these prices are even higher given certain specific specifications such as uh, um, uh, SS316 piping, et cetera, et cetera, as well as documentation that goes along in the segment. So it's not going to be one twelfth. But uh, it's not going to be, uh, uh, you know, one, one is to one also. It's difficult to say. It depends from customer to customer. And so I would, I would, have, I, I would encourage you not to look at the fact that, that it is on uh, the, the per, mega, per machine would give the same revenue as the higher megawatt. But the profitability would be same, right? As compared, I mean, in the API segment. Well, the profitability is higher. You are very right about that. It's uh, it's very difficult to generalize because you're, took, you're you're asking about number of machines versus megawatts versus uh, profit per. Uh, so, but but it will be higher, and so therefore it's better for us to just talk about the fact that uh, uh, that's why we reflect our order books in crores, and I think that is a better way for you to measure it as well. Okay, and my so second question is uh, um, uh, the scalability of this 30 to 100 megawatt range business. Now, uh, so far we had the GE brand, which now we won't be having it. So how soon and, uh, you know, we can scale this business and what are your plans for, say, a couple of years down the line? I guess uh, currently it is doing some 150 odd crores of uh, business at the peak level. Uh, well, I mean, to the extent that the, the, the numbers have been disclosed in the past, uh, that'd be fine. The joint venture has always, in, our, in my personal opinion, underperformed its market potential. Uh, the, the products were marketed jointly under the G and Sivani brand. And like I said, technology of both partners was used in applications and installations. And so we have running references on our technology. They have running references on their technology. So, so as far as the customer is concerned, we do have the, uh, the, the viable and validated technologies uh, available. Uh, from a perspective of market reach, as Prasad pointed out, we will be using the same market reach uh, channels that we use for the below 30 megawatt segment. 
and so I believe at least and and in the market segment from 30 to 40 to 50, maybe 60 megawatts even, this would be quite consistent. In the 80, 90, 100 megawatt segment, it might be slightly different. And let's come to that. We will, we will also discover what are the challenges on the way. We believe that this is a, a, a very vast opportunity for us, especially in the international market. And we will look at it in a very conscious manner with dedicated personnel and with dedicated resources to take that forward. But sir, any outlook in terms of uh, scalability, like can you go to like 200, 300, 400 crores in say a couple of years? Because we have no clue about the scalability oh, of yeah, this. Oh so yeah, of course. Uh, I, mean, I mean, the fact is that uh, uh, our anticipation is that, um, uh, that we would get um, from a negligible market share right now, we would only increase from there. And very frankly, we believe that, um, uh, I, I, I think, let me get back to you in the next couple of quarters on to what the level would be exactly. But uh, I believe that it should play a significant role in our revenue uh, going forward and possibly equate our product revenue in a couple of years. And the profitability can be, uh, the potential is 20% uh, plus kind of operating margins in this business also. Once you reach a, uh, you know, product reasonable margins in the, scale. The product margins in, 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 in general are, are dependent on geography. The aftermarket segment is what actually contributes significantly towards uh, uh, the, the, the overall revenue, uh, the overall EBITDA of the company. And so the fact that we don't have such a large install base in the 30 to 100 megawatt category will, will, um, uh, will, will limit that. But having said it, that we, we, we anticipate good growth. And for the future, once we have the install base, we will be able to service these customers for the next 25 to 30 years and therefore garner what is somewhere in the extent of 85% or 90% of the life cycle value of a customer, which comes from the aftermarket. Okay, and so lastly, sir, just to conclude, I mean, uh, last few years we have been in that uh, seven, 800 crore range of revenue and, you know, profitability also at similar levels. Now, uh, the, the kind of outlook which you are giving and, and the opportunity size which you are looking at, is it fair to assume that North Riveni is entering into a multi-year high growth phase from here on? Um, I, I would say so because we have a number of uh, avenues for growth. One is the 30 to 100 megawatt segment which we will be entering independently where we already have reference bases and we will try to build uh, a greater uh, order book in that segment which will build up over the course of the years. Uh, we have the API segment which we've already talked about in terms of growth. We have an increased push in the below 30 megawatt segment on renewables, which we would think would add to growth, coupled with general fixed capital formation globally, which will aid. And the most important from a margin perspective is the aftermarket. We will be pursuing that market very aggressively for growth in not only our, our existing uh, installed base for repairs and service, but on the refurbishment side. And we wish to spend money on this side because it is it has extremely good return on capital and return on investment. Uh, so we anticipate all four organic routes for growth to perform well. We, of course, will be investing into diversification and product, new, new product lines, such as our supercritical carbon dioxide, as well as certain other areas of rotating equipment, where which should also aid growth. So we are positioning ourselves for growth in the future. We think we have the capacity, capacity necessary. We will need to add on capability and that is where we're positioned at right now. Great, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next question is from the lineup, Bhavin Vitlani from SBI Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, a few questions. First, uh, uh, the litigation uh, that we had with our JV partner, uh, GE, is now all done and dusted. No further pending litigations? Uh, no, no pending litigations, as we've said. Uh, thank you. All, all, uh, pending, no, all pending litigation with our JV partner is over. We have some other litigations from income tax, etc., which are routine and ongoing. Sure. Uh, thanks. Uh, the the second question is on on the uh, uh, the larger uh, size turbines, as you kind of highlighted, uh, and uh, this is also in respect to some of the global uh, competitors of yours pledging not to sell turbines uh, when it comes to coal-based uh, uh, power plants. Um, is there an area where uh, now uh, Triveni could get an edge? Because in the past cycle, uh, 
uh, these orders uh, went to your MNCP or set? You know, Babin, I think you bring up an interesting point because largely the the large competitors of ours who have stated this that they would not be selling for coal use, uh, I think they've been talking about their utility range of turbines. The distinction between a utility range and industrial range and in which Triveni operates in this 0 to 100 megawatt space is that we provide not only power but also heat as a requirement for our industry. And as you know, generating heat for industry through a renewable source is extremely inefficient and extremely uh, cost uncompetitive. So uh, you have to have on-site generation. To the extent that on-site generation uses renewable fuels, that's great. It works towards uh, the decarbonization uh, model that we all expect and all are working towards. But to the extent that it, it has uh, carbonous material, uh, then that is what it, what it does take. Competitively, I don't think these companies have stopped offering these turbines for uh, the industrial space. Yeah, uh, sure. we, still see, we still we still see them in the market for for the for the for the industrial space. Uh, but having said that, while we've said in the past that we've seen the utility range, uh, which is above 100 megawatts, decline. The market declined by over 80 to 85 percent over the last uh, seven, eight, ten years. The market for below 100 megawatts both below 30 megawatts and 30 to 100 megawatts, both have grown at about 2 to 5% annually over the last 7 to 10 years. So uh, there is consistent demand. There is higher capacity requirements that are coming up from industry, and as well as coupled with genuine renewable energy-based independent power production requirement. Sure. Uh, could you also speak about oil and gas, uh, especially in India, because that's a sector where I mean, you were practically absent in the last up cycle, and, and we are seeing a number of refinery uh, additions, and they will also set up captive power plants. So this is not just the drive turbines, but the captive power turbines. Uh, 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 so have you also been qualified by the likes of EIL for the CPPs, and what's the kind of business momentum uh, we are seeing in that space? Yes, we're qualified by EIL, by PDIL, and by other consultants, and, and largely, like you said, apart from the API drive market, which may be driven by compressors or pumps or blowers, etc., there's a need for capital power production within, within uh, refineries. Refineries largely tend to use gas turbines for the primary requirement of power production, but auxiliary requirements such as waste heat recovery and other steam requirements do come from steam turbines. I'll let Prasad comment on the domestic uh, market. Prasad, if you could just comment on the, the oil and gas heat, uh, captive power requirement. Yes, yes. So oil and gas captive power requirement, yes. As you rightly mentioned that uh, there is an upswing there, and uh, we have been approved by EAL, PAL, and all for even captive power plant that is uh, generating uh, alternate drives. So right now, all the inquiries, whatever we are having, uh, yes, uh, we are eligible to participate in those uh, things. But uh, as uh, our uh, VCMD mentioned, that there's a limited uh, traction in this because the main plant will be uh, gas-based, the gas turbine-based sort of a thing. These auxiliary plants are uh, alternator-driven uh, plants. So we are there in that market. So we'll be participating in all these uh, new inquiries, whatever released by uh, IOCLs, DPCLs, all these sort of things. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Uh, just uh, a follow-up here. Uh, are these uh, if potentials like in a, a, a hundred or a couple of hundred crores uh, each project? Uh, no. No, I think, uh, well, it depends on what scope you're looking at. For us, uh, no. Oh, sure. I mean, yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to the participants, please limit your questions to two per participant. Should you have any follow-up, may be requested to rejoin the queue. The next question is from the line of Kunal Shed from BNK Securities. Please go ahead. Good afternoon. So Kunal Shed, your line is in talk mode. Kindly go ahead with your question, please. As there is no response from the current participant, we move to the next question from the line of Ashutosh from Ocean Dial. Please go ahead. Hello. Yes. Good afternoon. Yeah. yeah. Hi. 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 
uh, congrats on a very good set of order inflows and decent numbers in general. Uh, I uh, just wanted to understand, I mean, uh, you also alluded to the fact that you would be expecting a decent set of order inflows last quarter as well and this quarter as well you have uh, done very well. So just wanted to understand how much of uh, uh, this is uh, uh, a very sustained uh, base from a demand side perspective. How significantly do you see uh, the demand for your products changing from let's say something like last two, three years? And uh, as uh, some of the other participant also mentioned, we have been in the range of around 700 crores of top line. How, how significant do you see uh, that run rate changing order inflow and the growth uh, for us in, let's say, next two to three years? Uh, so the revenue for Triveni turbines is directly related to the order booking. So let's just focus on order booking to that extent. Apart from the aftermarket segment, which runs in a very short cycle of order booking. But the aftermarket itself has grown to now nearly 27% of revenue. And so that is performing exceedingly well. And we expect that to continue growing by about 20% a year, 15, 20% a year. Um, on the order booking side, uh, our optimism stretches multi-quarter. While in this past quarter, we were surprised by uh, the, the, the greater participation of the domestic market, we had, had actually anticipated uh, the international market to have contributed more. We believe that this will, the next couple of quarters will have the international market con contributing. As I had alluded, this, so that provides visibility very easily for FY23 in terms of the high growth that we want to maintain. Following that, we believe that market segments that we talked about, which is an increased participation in the 30 to 100 megawatt space, which actually has an order delivery cycle of about 14, 14 plus months, 14 to 16 months. You must keep that in mind. Uh, the API, which has an order delivery cycle of four to six months, um, in, uh, and as well as uh, other uh, applications, will, will continue to aid our growth in order booking. So we're quite optimistic that we'll be able to grow at a decent pace in the coming years. So, so, so do you think this is kind of the base run rate which we are looking at right now, around 300 crores kind of run rate? No, I think this is somewhat on the higher side. Uh, this is record. We, well, I think about 200, 250 is something that is, uh, that is, that is something that's quite visible for the next, well, more than that, 250 plus is visible for the next couple of quarters. Um, maybe more, a little more. Yeah. yeah. Fair enough, fair enough. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Thanks for the clarification. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kunal Jait from BNK Securities. Please go ahead. Hello. Thank you for the opportunity. Am I audible, sir? Yes, you are. Yeah. Hi. So my first question was relating to the margins. Uh, we did make a comment that uh, uh, you know, the margins were impacted because of the higher contribution of uh, domestic, uh, you know, in the current quarter. So I was just wondering, uh, uh, you know, is, is that the trend in terms of are, are domestic generally a lower margin business? Because one would have assumed given that, you know, domestic, you have a large market share, the margin profile would be relatively better than an international market. Uh, no, it's, it, the domestic market, I think not for us, but for all capital goods manufacturers is the lowest, you know, in, compared to international. For a variety of reasons, the competitive intensity in India is much higher. And so that drives a lower profitability margin. Uh, also, the ability for us to transfer and, and, and therefore then transfer any price increases in the domestic park market are more limited also. But having said that, we, we also run a program whereby we'd like to maintain a market share. And, and by that, we, uh, we, 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 we it, sometimes you have to take lower, mark, uh, uh, lower margin orders. Okay. So, so the, does that really mean uh, that you know, the competitive intensity in domestic market uh, has increased? Because, you know, uh, in India, uh, you know, you were the dominant player and then there were, you know, hardly one or two other players. So has, has new players come up recently? No, no, no. I think the pre predominant competition is between Siemens and us, and we have a healthy competition. As you, as you would uh, um, estimate, the fact is that even though domestic margins uh, may be lower, uh, from a global perspective, and I think even domestic perspective, getting margins on the capital good itself is an achievement because nearly 85 to 90 percent of the value of a customer from a profitability perspective comes uh, in the aftermarket. 
So really getting that install base is, uh, is, is a very important factor for us because that gives visibility of earnings from a much longer perspective. Uh, but having said that, uh, um, uh, the competitive, we, there is some movement right now in terms of a huge fluctuation on input pricing. And so we have taken and reflated our costs to current prices. And we are not anticipating uh, any price reductions uh, going forward in terms of raw material. And so therefore, um, this is where it's turned out in terms of how we've priced and how we've uh, positioned uh, uh, ourselves in the market domestically. And, and sir, uh, my second question is relating to our international market. Uh, <clears throat> because we have such a wide exposure in the international market, you know, uh, what would be the best way to, you know, track, uh, I mean, what are the variables that one should track? Because it, it becomes almost impossible for us to, you know, get, uh, get a handle of, you know, your outlook on the international markets, I mean, from an outsider perspective. Um, you see, what are the drivers for demand? They depend on geography. Uh, geographies like Europe are heavily dominated by uh, renewable energy, both from biomass-based IPPs as well as uh, solid municipal waste incineration. Uh, a lot of these are supported by government policies, and so therefore government policies which provide some subsidy to the developer uh, would be a good benchmark for you to judge Europe, uh, Japan, and to an extent the United States. But the United States also does have uh, fresh capex, much like uh, Southeast Asia, Africa, Middle East. Middle East uh, and parts of South America are also seeing requirement growth in uh, um, uh, API requirements from our order book perspective. And so, actually, it's very difficult to say. But I, I would I would say general fixed capital formation stability uh, are what would lead to um, 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 a visibility for for you to take on our order book <coughs> internationally. Um, the competitive intensity is not changed internationally. The players are the same. In fact, we find um, some of the larger players leaving the market because of the pricing that I think we are uh, bringing in. So I, I think we're quite confident. I, I, the bigger issue that we have internationally is is reach to be able to ensure that we are we are able to cater to every uh, inquiry effectively. Uh, our investments recently, in terms of being able to get specific technologies in our blades in terms of efficiency uh, and reliability have gone a long way in terms of meeting customer expectations internationally, which are all learning that we get over a period of time. And so uh, I think we're quite well positioned going forward in the international market as well. Of course, we, we, had, we hope that there is no third wave, fourth wave, fifth wave of COVID, which inhibits uh, our mode of doing business, which is which we are heavily reliant on travel. For, to be able to get international orders. Sure. Thank you. Thank you so much for such a detailed answer. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Manish Goel from Inam Holdings. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, uh, so, Nikhil, uh, just want to get a sense like in 2011-12, we probably saw the peak market uh, of 2000 megawatts. So, have we come back to that level, at least on the inquiry terms? Uh, uh, that is the first question. And second is, if you can also give us a perspective as to like uh, how would be the how was the market uh, between zero to thirty megawatt and thirty to hundred megawatt at that point of time? And I was not clear as to you did mention about thirty to hundred megawatt opportunity in India, but maybe if you can repeat in terms of what is the uh, dynamics over there. Um, okay, uh, Manish, so in 2011, which was the last peak, I think that we've been talked about a number of times, we saw the entire market of 0 to 100 megawatts at about 2,000, uh, 4,300, 4,400 megawatts of orders placed, which is split uh, somewhere in the region of about 1,800, 2,000 megawatts below 30, and the rest above 30 megawatts. Of course, at that point in time, uh, that was significantly driven by fixed capital formation in industries <coughs> such as cement and steel. As we sit today, uh, in the first half year, we've had orders in the below 30 megawatt range of about 550 odd megawatts, and we anticipate the year to end somewhere in the region of about uh, 11, 1200 megawatts. So we still have uh, growth um, uh, from a potential perspective uh, of people who remember the, the growth spurt in uh, that period of time. Um, uh, in the 30 to 100 megawatt segment, um, India has uh, uh, 
we've, we've ex expanded our capacities uh, of industry in general. And so people who are ordering the 20, 25 megawatt turbines will now order uh, 35, 40 megawatt turbines. And so we anticipate the fact that even though the market size may have been uh, over 2,000 megawatts back in 2011, it's currently somewhere in the region of about uh, uh, 400 odd megawatts on the half year, and maybe 800 odd megawatts for the full year, domestically. Uh, so this, is, this, is a, this is an area which will grow, uh, in our opinion, uh, quite significantly going forward. Sorry, uh, you mentioned 400 megawatt was the market uh, in first half, half of the current year. Half year for about th about 3200. Okay. 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 And okay. And globally, you so. Uh, and globally, the market okay, size so of 3200 is about one and a half times what it is in India. Uh, to give you an idea, like I alluded to earlier, the inquiry levels uh, uh, for the domestically in the second quarter increased by 40% and uh, internationally increased by 67%. 67% because there wasn't as much finalization as we anticipated. Uh, and the inquiry levels as a whole for the half year uh, increased on a year-on-year -year basis from uh, about 2.3 gigawatts to about 3.5 gigawatts. Um, um, and the domestic part of that was from about 900 odd uh, megawatts to about one and a half gigawatts. So there's been good growth. So the inquiry you level. The domestic one? I, I think, I, you know, now you're going to get me into trouble because everyone seems to keep asking for these numbers every time, uh, which I've been a little hesitant to do. But suffice to say that uh, the domestic inquiry level uh, um, contributes about a third to 40 percent, a third of our, uh, our entire inquiry book. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the lineup, Nilesh Jetani from Envision Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so my question was on the uh, capacity utilization levels and thereafter margins. So I wanted to understand at present what is our capacity utilization levels. And second part of the question is, so going forward, once, we, uh, once the operating leverage kicks in because of the strong ordering flows in the recent past, will this operating leverage help us to more than offset the impact of commodity prices or you expect margins to remain stable going forward? Uh, like I said, well, the two separate questions actually that you asked were on the capacity utilization space uh, over the period of time, and, as, and if you've looked at our balance sheet, we operate on a very asset light model, uh, and we've consciously uh, moved further into a more asset light model by encouraging uh, only um, graduates on our shop floor who, who will be multidisciplined and be able to do multitasking. And so, so we want to move more into manufacture of only IP sensitive and critical value added products and, and largely stick on the assembly testing space. So for growth in the, uh, for the capacity that may be required um, for our order book going forward, we would have to use a prudent mix of, uh, of uh, uh, vendors and, uh, um, and a variety of other means by which to achieve uh, our production levels. And we're cognizant of it, and we've planned on it. So uh, we've, there may be a little bit of investment, 5, 7, 10 crores here and there. But I think that we capacity is really not the constraint for Triveni turbines. Uh, so the second question our, was on. So our capacity utilization today currently would be at what levels? You know, it's difficult to say because, like I said, a majority of our, uh, our capacity is, is measured on uh, assembly and testing. So with that, you, uh, is, uh, you, have to, you have to base it on the theoretical number of shifts that we may run, which may be three. And the fact that we're running possibly one plus shift right now means that we have ample capacity. So it's not fair to say that we're at 30, 40% capacity utilization, but it's not fair to say that we're at 70, 80% capacity utilization also. Got it. So this incremental order inflows uh, won't help to add to much uh, operating leverage. Yeah, yeah. There, will, they, 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 there will be some overhead absorption, especially from the, the fact that higher revenue will, we have a, a fixed overheads in terms of R&D and, and uh, marketing, and, and those are the more expensive overheads that we have. So that uh, higher revenue always does give us operating leverage uh, and something that we will benefit from. Got it. So on the margins uh, front, so going ahead with this, uh, so we, as we largely do the short cycle products, 
this operating leverage of course won't help to aid the margins but will the margins improve going ahead uh margins are a reflection of uh, of um of where the product order is from um and this is something that uh, you know it's very difficult to explain why there's such a sharp difference between domestic orders margins and international orders but having said that um we believe that that we have factored in uh um uh, price increases into our into our uh, uh into our pricing at the current point in time uh we're not we we don't want to pass full prices into our customers and so there may be a margin impact on the negative side for the domestic market in the coming quarters but overall given the fact that it'll be higher in, higher participation of the international market in revenue as well as the fact that we will have a good part, a good uh, revenue from our after market uh, margins should be somewhat the same uh, i think right now what what would be a greater focus for us is to expand revenue i think that was a question earlier and we were quite confident that we'd be able to maintain at, at least maintain margins uh, if not slightly better than got it got it on the exports front sir uh, are we also facing some uh, freight related issues uh, the cost going up so going forward the next Six to nine months, how we envisage? Because of course, exports are a higher margin business for us. But with the freight cost going up, uh, will we be able to get that kind of margins as enjoyed in the past? No, freight is a. Uh, we, we we generally uh, have uh, uh, freight as actual. So the the customer that usually takes the freight cost into his consideration. We would freight to the extent that our supplies. uh uh impacted would uh, would impact us but it's largely passed through so containerized costs have gone up but most of our uh most of our containerized prices have gone up because of non availability of containers but a lot of our supply goes on skids is not containerized some parts are containerized of course so it's not it's not fully uh, a matter for 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 trivini turbines to uh, uh to be worried about but having said that um, our, our our clients also cognizant of it and we cost in all prices at the point in time of order so we don't really take open uh, risk um much like we do for uh, currency hedging etc so we don't think it's our business to to uh, to 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 risk all these uh, fluctuations in market and at the time that the order is taken we try to mitigate that risk immediately so the customer okay. is it and one last question sir uh, i guess it was asked initially also but this sharp jump in the order inflow so what percentage you would attribute it to the volume growth and what percentage would be value growth oh no it's uh, pretty much all uh, all value put number of orders growth sorry i i missed it it's pretty much all of it is uh, uh, volume growth okay okay got it okay sir those were my questions thank you so much and all the best for the rest of the part of the year thank you very much thank you A reminder to the participants: anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one at this time. The next question is a follow-up from the line of Ankit Babel from Shubham Ventures. Please go ahead. Hello. Yes. Yes. Please. Yeah, sir. Just wanted to uh, check any execution challenges you might face in your. Uh, existing order book in that 30 to 100 megawatt range uh, you know uh, in the company which you acquired because at at the point of uh, placing order g was a partner and lot many customers would have placed an order because of g and now g is not there so any uh, i mean complaints or anything from the customer side uh how well, you are addressing that yes 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 so firstly um, the joint venture the way that it was operated was that uh, um the, the all manufacturing was done by triveni turbines itself and marketing was done by respective partners uh, g baker hughes did it internationally triveni turbines did it for india and technologies was uh, was uh, uh contributed by both partners so given the fact that we are we have acquired that company the the executing resources are now part of triveni turbines from a project management perspective of course the manufacturing was always with triveni turbines the nature of the settlement which was amicable has also uh, specifically catered to this worry of yours which is that um, that all support would be given by both partners and whatever technology is required for executing the current order book which be on their technology 
uh, would still continue. Uh, a number of orders that the company is still, con is still executing or is executed in the, in, the, in the very near past have been to uh, Baker Hughes and GE as related parties, and so they continue to support us because it is in their best interest as well. Uh, but I think that, uh, very frankly, we have all the resources necessary. The customer communication that is, uh, that is necessary has also been, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, we've ensured that, that we keep the customers uh, and the customer satisfaction in mind in terms of execution. Okay, and so my uh, second question is, uh, how you arrived at the uh, valuation of this, uh, um, you know, buying the stake, 50% stake at just 8 crores, I mean, uh, the company That's a book value. to do a profit. Yes, yes, That's the face value of the shares. No, I agree, but, you know, uh, from, uh, I mean, a company which was making a profit of, say, 7, 8, 9 crores, valuing that at 16 crores, so what was the basis of that? Well, I, I, I wouldn't like to go into those details, but it was a comprehensive uh, 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 settlement. And so all, all the numbers were combined into, uh, so it's, it's, it's better for you to look at it as one whole net settlement number rather than uh, differentiated settlement. <coughs> okay, and this 200 plus crore also which you get was uh, uh, because of some, I mean, uh, some losses which you could have uh, incurred or the, I mean, I again, this 200 it, crores. This, yeah, this number was just a, a settlement of dispute. So it's, it's a question for us to put what, are, what issues that we had behind us and move forward. Um, we have a lot of things to do from Trimini Turbine's perspective. Where we're very excited to be approaching the 3200 megawatt segment independently and with the vigor and entrepreneurialism that we uh, have shown in the below 30 megawatt segment. We have other growth avenues that we need to spend time on. We have a lot of technological uh, uh, investments and uh, interventions that we're making. We also have uh, good money in the bank, which we need to find prudent uh, uses for. So we don't, we didn't want uh, these disputes to take up uh, uh, so much of our time. You know, so it's better for us to move on, and and I'm sure our, our, our shareholders uh, would agree with that as well. True, true, sir. Yeah, great, sir. Thanks, thanks for the explanation. Thank you very much, and thank you everyone for joining. Uh, uh, are there any more questions or should we wrap up now? Uh, no questions. So over to you for closing comments. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for joining the call. Uh, as I said, we're very optimistic on the future for Triveni turbines. Uh, the order booking uh, in the next couple of quarters we anticipate to be quite robust so as to lead to a, a very good and a record order booking starting FY23, um, which should, of course, then lead to uh, an, an increased and enhanced revenue along our expectations. Uh, we will continue to keep you informed on decisions on utilization of cash which, which the board may make. And we look forward to being in touch with you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Triveni Turbine Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you all for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.